Egypt is home to one of the most fascinating civilizations in the world. They built the pyramids, they invented mathematics and geometry, and they even invented the first calendar. So the larger a mummy here is in the shape of a human mummy. It's a civilization that's brought so much to the world, but one we're still discovering new things about today. Here are 15 amazing discoveries in Egypt that scare scientists. <laughs> Scan of God A lot of mysteries of ancient Egypt we'll be looking at involve mummies and the Egyptians' fascination with the afterlife. As you may be aware, the Egyptians used to preserve the remains of leaders or notable people through mummification with things known as mummies. This is because they wanted to preserve their bodies so that their spirit could still use it in the underworld. The preservation techniques were done so well that 3,000 years later historians know what ancient Egyptians look like today. In this picture, we can see a childlike mummy, which people assumed were the remains of a child who died too early. However, a CT scan on the remains revealed that it was just mud and grain put together in the shape of a human being. Marcia Javid, a director of medical imaging, told the Daily Mail, in ancient Egypt, when there was a tomb created for a human being, they would place certain artifacts and even certain animals in with these mummified remains. The mummy is believed to be shaped to resemble Osiris, the Egyptian god of death. He features a lot in this list and was an integral part of Egyptian culture. The legend has it that Osiris is buried somewhere and awaiting discovery. Another mummy was in the shape of a bird and meant to represent Horus, the, the ancient Egyptian god of kingship and the sky. It's unclear as to why these childlike mummies were made, but the most reasonable explanation was that they were made as an offering to the gods and would be of help when the deceased advanced to the afterlife. Now let's get ready for today's missing topic. But before we move on, here's today's missing topic. What do you think of this picture? Is it human or possibly another life form? Let us know in the comments and include hashtag missing topic. We're excited to see what answers you guys come up with. Hey, hey, did you know that if you smash the like button, subscribe and click the notification bell, you're more likely to win the lottery? So what are you waiting for? Lion Mummy Another example of Egyptians making ritual sacrifices is the lion mummy. As we mentioned earlier, sacrifices were regularly made to assist people who have died when they made their way to the next life. Sadly, this included the sacrifice of animals. The CT scans show that two of the five lion mummies were lion cubs, but the scan was unable to identify the remains of the other three. They were definitely cat-like, so it could suggest other cats we have today, or maybe an animal we have no knowledge about that went extinct thousands of years ago. Mostafa Waziri, General Secretary of Egypt's Supreme Council of Antiquities, said, if it's a cheetah, a leopard, a lioness, a panther, whatever, it will be one of its kind. The lion cub was a huge find as it's only the second time that a lion mummy was found. The other time was back in 2004. Apparently, animal sacrifices were so popular that some cats and dogs were bred purely so that later they could be sacrificed. Salima Ikram, an Egyptologist at the American University of Cairo says, I think it's one of the most exciting series of finds in the world of animal mummies ever. <laughs> mummy portraits. Our next topic steps outside of ancient Egypt and looks at Roman Egypt when Egypt was part of the Roman Empire. By then, instead of the mummification of the dead, they decided to have portraits of the recently deceased. However, sometimes they blended the old traditions with the new, where a mummified tomb would have a portrait on its cover. The painter or painters of these magnificent portraits is unknown. Researchers have noticed stylistic similarities, which hint that they were painted by the same person or there were schools or studios where these techniques were passed on to other people. However, the style of paintings on the themes was clearly inspired by ancient Rome and looks a lot different than paintings found in ancient Egypt. What's particularly startling is the materials used for these paintings were not native to Egypt and could typically come from either Europe or Lebanon. In fact, most of the wood used for the paintings were imported from Europe. 80% of the portraits are made from wood which isn't found in Egypt. These portraits were limited to the upper class of Roman Egypt, as not everyone's family could afford to have a painting of a recently departed loved one. About 1,000 of them survive today. 
What's remarkable about these is that because of the hot Egyptian climate, the paintings have been preserved almost perfectly. But given the fact that these portraits appeared in Roman Egypt rather than ancient Egypt, these portraits have often been overlooked. Hopefully in future we'll discover more about these truly amazing artifacts. <laughs> Book of the Dead Moving back to ancient Egypt, one of the most astounding artifacts from this era is the Book of the Dead. Egyptians were the first, if not one of the first, civilizations to write things down on paper, or back then known as papyrus. The most famous collection of Egyptian writings in this book and contains a collection of magic formulas or spells aimed at protecting the dead. There were also basic roadmaps provided so that the dead could navigate their way in the afterworld. At first, these spells were only given to pharaohs and exclusive members of society. But gradually over time, these spells were offered out to regular people. So what happened in the Egyptian afterlife? At first, you would be greeted by the jackal-headed god Anubis. Anubis has a weighing scale and weigh your heart against the feather of an ostrich. When you're being mummified, a team of priests would remove every organ except the heart. In those days, they didn't know that the heart was merely used to pump blood around the body. They thought the heart was where a person's emotions and intelligence were and had basically mistaken it for the brain. Before meeting Anubis, the person's spirit goes through a world known as the Duat and needs to pass a number of monsters and demons. The magic and spells from the Book of the Dead are there to help this spirit defeat or avoid these monsters. Then the spirit is judged by 40 priests on whether the person has led a noble life. There are 42 sins you could commit in ancient Egypt, but broadly just ask you not to lie, steal, cheat, or murder anybody. Once the person passes by these priests, they meet the god of Anubis, where their fate is finally decided. If you were a good person in your life, you could pass through. You would pass through and live an everlasting life in paradise. If you weren't such a good person, you would be devoured by the goddess Amamet. <laughs> Osiris Shaft As we mentioned earlier, Osiris is the god of death. One of the most amazing features of the pyramids of Giza is the Osiris Shaft. This is a deep underground tunnel containing pottery shards, figurines, and ceramic beads. Many historians contend that this amazing tomb was built specifically to honor the god of Osiris and provide him with his own burial spot in Egypt. The most shocking aspect of this tomb was the time when it was built. The lowest level of the pyramids is believed to be 55 to 66 meters below the surface of the Giza Plateau. The very advanced network of tunnels would have been incredibly difficult to construct with merely bronze tools. This supports the many conspiracy theorists that the ancient Egyptians didn't even build this and that a much older civilization did. People usually argue that Egyptians were either contacted by aliens or time travelers from today. The tunnels have been known as early back as the 1930s, but proper excavation only took place in the late 20th century. Sadly, this tunnel isn't open to tourists. In fact, you have to pay roughly $1,500 to $2,000 to get it open for an hour or two. Egyptians are torn between finding out exactly what happened here and preserving its beauty for future generations. <laughs> Nilometer as most of you may know, Egypt is home to the River Nile, the longest river in the world and is visible from space. It stretches a greater distance than a direct flight from Berlin to New York. It's this amazing river that led to Egypt rising up to becoming one of the world's greatest empires. The Nilometer is a structure which measures the water level and clarity of this amazing river. There were three types of Nilometer. The first was a simple vertical column. The second was a corridor of steps leading down into the Nile, and the third involved a well going down into the ground. The annual flooding of the Nile was of huge importance, as after the flooding the soil would have rich alluvial deposits. Not enough flooding could cause a famine. Too much flooding could destroy the country's infrastructure. The movement of this river was literally a matter of life and death. Predicting the success of the harvest could also allow them to assess the tax rate for that year as well. This brings us back to the level of technology in ancient Egypt. These measurement tools were continued to be used in Roman times and up as far as the 20th century, when flooding was less prevalent on the Nile. <coughs> Colored coffins 
As we mentioned earlier, historians and archaeologists keep discovering things new about Egypt every day. It was only in 2019 that 20 ancient wooden coffins near the Egyptian city of Luxor were found. Thousands of years later, the colors and designs of these coffins were still visible and were decorated in shades of red, green, white, and black. These coffins were believed to be used for male and female priests, as well as coffins for children who had prematurely passed away. As well as these coffins, there were also discovered an industrial zone where pottery sculptures were made. Archaeologist Zahi Hawass told CNN, Up until now, everything we knew about the Luxor region came from the tombs themselves, but this new discovery will allow us to shed a light on the tools and techniques used to produce the royal coffins and the furniture placed in the tombs. This is believed to be the largest excavation since the tomb of Tutankhamun, so who knows what they'll find. <laughs> High Priest Tomb One of the most satisfying aspects researching ancient Egypt is when one of their riddles is finally solved. In the Saqqara burial grounds lies the remains of a priest and a mystery surrounds what happened to him. Watai was a priest. He's clearly a respected person as an inscription on the wall reads, Watai, purified priest to the king, overseer of the divine estate, overseer of the sacred boat, revered with the great god Watai. However, another name appeared on the tomb, that of Merit Min, who is Watite's mother. Also, his name was inscribed after something else was scratched off. This led to the theory that he took someone else's tomb and made it his own. Another inscription is dedicated to his brother, but does not name him. It's possible that he stole his own brother's tomb. There were also bones of humans found at the tomb. The age and gender of these skeletons all correspond to the number of children he had and their relative ages. The possible explanation is that they all died of the same disease. Historians suggest it could be malaria, and if so, it's the earliest record of the disease. <laughs> Temple of Kom Ombo Next up, we have Kom Ombo, which is one of the most unusual tombs in all of ancient Egypt. It has a double design, and its court halls and sanctuaries are in sets of two to replicate two gods. Everything in this tomb is perfectly symmetrical, despite the fact that it was built thousands of years ago. The eastern side represents the god of Sebek, a crocodile god who's the god of life and fertility. In those days, the Nile was infested with crocodiles, and they believed they were sacred creatures. The western side pays homage to the god Hororis, who is the god of the sky and protector of the king. It's also unique as its carvings are one of the earliest drawings of surgical or medical instruments. There are carvings of scalpels, forceps, speculators, and scissors, and demonstrates just how advanced Egyptian society was. Sadly, most of this temple has been worn away from natural forces, but the fact that some of its designs still remain thousands of years later is still pretty impressive. Alien Desert Our next amazing discovery moves away from the man-made structure of ancient Egypt and looks at the amazing natural beauty found in the country. In fact, it's not even too controversial to say that the White Desert is one of the most beautiful places on Earth. It's a desert, except it's completely white. The white color is because the entire desert is made of chalk. Geologists believe that it's a result of differential weathering, which has led to some odd-looking rocks. Some rocks resemble a chicken, some resemble a mushroom, and one even resembles a weeping lady. The desert can get extremely windy, and the wind picks up sand as the wind crashes against the rocks continuously. Despite the windy weather, the desert is a huge tourist attraction. As well as the magnificent rocks, there's no clouds and no air pollution, so it's one of the best places in the world to observe the Milky Way at night. <laughs> Garbage City since we've spent so much time talking about ancient Egypt, perhaps we should take a look at modern Egypt. Is there anything strange and exciting about modern Egypt today? One of the strangest things in modern Egypt is something known as Garbage City. This is an area of Cairo where almost everything is garbage. Despite having a population of over 20 million, the Cairo metropolitan area never properly established a garbage collecting system. The people who live in Garbage City essentially travel to other parts of Cairo, offer to take rubbish, and then bring it back on donkeys. Once they've brought it back, they separate it into recyclable and non-recyclable. The most remarkable thing is how much of the waste these people manage to recycle. They recycle 90% of what they take, 
which is over four times the amount that cities in the US or Europe would hope to achieve. Sorting is done by hand. Plastics and other materials are pulverized, melted, or pelleted until all that's left is rotting vegetables. These rotting vegetables are then fed to pigs, which are used as farm animals. These people are Coptic Christians, so unlike the majority Muslim population in Egypt, they're able to eat pork. As impressive as this is, it's no way to live and is an incredibly unhealthy environment for its inhabitants. There's also now private waste disposal companies were available in Cairo, who these people simply couldn't compete against. The garbage is both a blessing and a curse as it provides them with an income, but results in very unhealthy living conditions. Nonetheless, the resourcefulness of these people and ability to make the best out of a bad situation is definitely worth admiration. Giant statue In 2017, archaeologists from Egypt and Germany came across a ginormous statue. It's eight feet tall and believed to depict a former ruler of ancient Egypt named Pharaoh Ramses II. He was a very successful military commander and led Egypt's invasions of Syria and Sudan. Some argue that he was the most powerful ruler in all of ancient Egypt. Researchers are guessing that the statue was of him because he was the founder of the Sun Temple, so it makes sense that the Egyptians would pay homage to him in his own temple. Dr. Salima Akram, an archaeologist and professor at Egyptology at the American University in Cairo, says the site is crucially important because it's basically rescue archaeology of one of the most important religious places in ancient Egyptian history. It's the birthplace of the sun god and indeed of Egypt and its civilization in terms of Egyptian mythology. <laughs> Black Boxes If you weren't convinced about the theories that aliens or time travelers visited ancient Egypt, then maybe take a look at these black boxes. These weigh more than 100 tons and were found near the pyramids of Giza. Remember, this was before forklifts or trucks, so transporting heavy objects wasn't so easy. It was, believe it or not, before the invention of the wheel, so these heavy materials were transported along the ground. Brian Forrester, an author on ancient civilizations, believes that the precision of these boxes are at the same standard of construction work in the 20th century. The boxes are perfectly flat and the angles are exactly 90 degrees. Doing this without any modern machinery is either impossible or incredibly difficult. Researchers have suggested that these black boxes were intended to hold the mummified remains of bulls. Bulls were also sacred in Egyptian culture and were believed to be reincarnation of the god Ptah, who is the god of craftsmen and sculptors. The sculptors of these boxes were certainly blessed by the gods making these. <laughs> Dendera Light So, if the black boxes weren't enough to convince you, maybe Dendera Light might change your mind. This is a carving in the Dendera Ad, something which resembled modern lighting technology. While some people claim the carvings to resemble something from Egyptian mythology, some contend that the technology of ancient Egypt was a bit more advanced than we think. The comparisons between the painting and the modern light bulb are uncanny. There's what looks like a hollow bulb and wire going through. A wire event stretches outside the bulb and connects to a box. All of these factors hint at the idea that the Egyptians had light bulbs at a time thousands of years before the discovery of electricity. As you can imagine, these drawings have led to some pretty wild conspiracy theories. Some believe that these light bulbs were brought over by aliens. Others contend that people have traveled back from our time and introduced them to this technology. The more realistic and less exciting theory is that it's just a drawing of a snake emerging from a lotus flower. Shopti Dolls and lastly, we'll be taking a look at Shaptis. These are mummified statues intended to represent the dead and their servants. Sadly, when a master died, they would also kill their servants so they could serve them in the afterlife. But this tradition was soon abandoned, and instead, these small statues took their place, which were meant to represent the servants. Each Shapti was inscribed with a particular spell, which would help the deceased in the afterlife. Most Egyptians worked in the community, the pyramids were not built by slaves, but by workers who believed in the greater good. If you believed that you couldn't work one day, you would get someone to replace you. This could be a relative or a friend. This is the function of the Shapti doll. If the deceased is asked to do something in the afterlife, but is feeling under the weather, 
this dog can take their place instead. So that brings us to the end. If you'd like us to provide more videos about ancient Egypt, let us know in the comments. We can't imagine that it's all that's left to look at when examining the mysteries and wonders of this civilization. As always, thanks for watching, like and subscribe. Mm-hmm. <laughs>